Friends, we are on the island of Trinidad in the Caribbean and we are in a place called Labre and this is the Pitch Lake. What I'm walking on now is the path or road that leads towards the Pitch Lake. And what is the Pitch Lake? The Pitch Lake is the world's largest natural commercial pitch, natural pitch, the pitch that you see on roads, runways, highways. That comes from a place like this, unless it's artificial. Now you would think that as this is the pitch lake and we're going towards the pitch lake, they would have probably better pitch paths. That's kind of funny, isn't it? But this path actually resembles a lot of the roads in the country. Looks very similar to this many of them now today is a sunny day quiet day it's early in the morning and there's nobody around that part there that's probably the museum i haven't been there for quite some time and i haven't been to the pitch lake in quite some time either we were on a road trip so this video actually makes part of a road trip in which we leave north of trinidad to go all the way to the south of Trinidad and a place called Ikakos. One of the stops is La Brea, right here in the Pitch Lake. Now it's the rainy season, which means it rains most of the time. Uh, in the Caribbean and Trinidad, there are only two seasons, the wet and the dry, or the dry and the rainy season. And during the wet or rainy season, it just rains so much that everything is blanketed with water and that's what's happening here all this growth the grass the green you don't see as much of it during the dry season because well it's dry but when you're wet season now the rainy season so everything is wet and it's green and the sad thing about it is in this video I won't be able to go to the middle of the pitch lake which is where you could see a lot more of the action. Something caught my eye there and I'm going to take a look at it, but I am not too sure what created it. Those of you who are expert, can let me know. What is this? Looks like a mound for what? Termites? Ants? What? Now, during the years of coming here, the area has not changed much. About the only thing that is new or progressed in a bit is the museum. The actual pitch lake and the surroundings remain the same. It's almost like it's etched in history. Sometimes I see they plant these plants with a tire around it. That's, that's an actual piece of pitch. It's hard. So... When it's dry, it gets hard. When it's very hot and wet, it gets soft and almost resembles oil. There are certain parts in the Pitch Lake where you could go, where it's a dugout, and you can access the watery side of the pitch, the liquid side of the pitch, um, from that hole. What we are walking on is actually the lake right now. So the, the surface of the lake is hard enough that we can walk and not sink. There are places where you can sink. Huh? For instance, I'm walking here right now and because of, like I said, the rainy season, there's all this growth, the grass and whatnot. You don't know what's lurking in there. So I wouldn't advise you to visit during the rainy season. And more so, I would not advise visiting when they have not cleaned up a bit. I mean, as a worldwide tourist attraction I would think they would do a little bit more uh, for people to come and see maybe they don't want many people to come and see the funny part is that when I arrived at the place a guy ran up to me and told me that he was world renowned because the BBC CNN MSNBC and all the others uh, came to interview him about the pitch lake and he wanted to charge me for a tour for my family. My family was with me this day. 
250 TT dollars in order to tell us about the pitch leak. I, I didn't quite go for that, so here I am walking on my own. And again, this is all pitch, the stuff that you use on roads. This is how it looks naturally. Now, one benefit they say, I haven't experienced it myself, but one benefit they say is good for the rainy season is that the water absorbs sulfur and it's supposed to be good for bathing and therapeutic for joints and whatever else. I haven't tried it, nor would I do it myself, but that's what they say. And you can see how wet it is. I didn't have on boots, so I didn't want to risk going through that. Now if we were to peel back a layer of the asphalt, the one that we're walking on, underneath would be liquid, the liquid asphalt. But I don't know. I don't know how deep you would have to dig for that. Now, despite having 109 acres of this pitch, this naturally occurring pitch, that is exported all over the world, especially to places like China, I believe, and I think even if, I, if memory calls me right, in the 1980s, we were living in a place called Utah in the USA. And while living there, we heard that Trinidad was exporting asphalt all the way to Utah to be used on the Salt Lake City Airport or Salt Lake Airport on their runway. So this asphalt goes all over the world. And you know the irony of it is? We have some of the worst roads in the world. So despite having this enormous amount of pitch, it can't seem to get to the roads. Now, why that is, or the politics behind it, I will leave you to discuss in the comments area of my YouTube channel. I don't get into politics, but I just find it a shame that, you know, despite this natural resource, we have terrible roads. Now, the Indians believe, and that is their Aborigines, the, the natural Indians, the Carib, or our Amerindians that were here before, believed that the pitch lake was a curse. Um, apparently, in their belief system, you can't eat hummingbirds because hummingbirds are the real or live apparition of their ancestors. And according to their legend, somebody ate two hummingbirds, thus causing a curse to come over the what is now the pitch lake and it swallowed a whole village. Now I don't know if that's true or not. However, through, through um, archaeological finds and whatnot, they have found carvings, sloth, skeleton and whatnot from the pitch. I guess that's in the process of digging the commercial aspect. I don't know. I believe those artifacts are in the museum, but the museum is closed today, so I will not be able to show you that. But I thought that was pretty interesting. So Walter Raleigh from history. This is something that's taught to us in um, secondary school here. So Walter Raleigh came here and when he found pitch, decided to use it in his ships as being good for patching and pitch is actually good for patching if you know how to apply it I also understand that uh, there was some work done by scientists on the lake itself and they found that there were microbes living underneath the hard crust of the asphalt. So just think where we are walking now, there's stuff deep in the earth where they are living. 
And the scientists want to dig more into that to see if, you know, it's possible that microbes are also living on other planets, which, from my layman's point of view, I don't see why not. I doubt we, you know, out of billions and billions and billions and billions, we somehow won the lottery uh, and are the only um, existing planet with life forms on it. I seriously doubt that. But that's an interesting find too. Now, I am walking away from the Pitch Lake. We're heading back to where I came from. There is another path down, but that path is more towards the factory side. They were cutting some wood on the right there, and they were making a set of racket. Hence, I don't have volume or sound rather in this video. It was quite annoying. You can see the layers of the pitch there. So we're going to go to the left and see the other path that you can explore if you come here. I also took a 360 video of the area. And in taking the 360, you can see more of the water, how much the water is actually covering the lake why, and why I couldn't go to the center. So, in fact, it actually does look like a literal lake, a water lake right now. Maybe when I get down through there, you'll be able to see it. If not, you can look at the 360 video. So you can look at it in any direction. In my personal opinion, I feel more could be done to this area. I mean, the museum is nice and all, but I don't know. Just spruce it up a bit, make it more fit for tourists. You know, it, it has that. I mean, they're doing okay with planting trees and whatnot, but I don't know. To me, the path could be a little bit more fine tuned, I guess. I want to say. Maybe with signage along the way to make it interesting. You know, rather than just blah, if you want to call it that, you know. I know it's a natural wonder, but for me, being as great an uh, object in our land as it is, it should be um, spruced up a bit. I don't know. Tell me what you think in the comments area of my YouTube channel. You know, it would be also good employment too for the people in La Brie. Not sure what the main employment opportunities are for the people in La Brie, but I'm sure they would not turn down being able to better maintain and monitor this place. It looks like it needs some maintenance. I can't imagine that they just allowed all that grass and everything to just go wherever. So this is the other side, the other path that you can go to get to the Pitch Lake. But in this path, there's a big warning sign. Basically, they don't want you going on this side as a, some sort of station or pump or something. And they don't want you passing on here too much. So we're going to stop right here. And in, and in any case, even if we wanted to go, which we didn't, you wouldn't have been able to go because, like I said, because of the rainy season, it's just a mass of water. Normally all here where that grass growing there is, um, see how wet, wet it is? It's just water there. So, I, you know, we really couldn't go any further, even if we wanted to. Normally that's just pitch all there. So thanks for watching today. Sorry if this wasn't as exciting as it normally is, but that's part of why it's just the pitch lake and you know, you come just to see it and think about the wonder of the world and then you go home, I guess. Tell me what you think in the comments area. Thanks for watching. If you did like, like it, share it and subscribe if you haven't to. Thanks so much.